The next section of image adjustments that we're going to look at are the ones in this section here that affect the color in different ways. The first one is invert, and it's pretty straightforward. It takes the colors that you see in your image, whether it's color or black and white, and it inverts them. Pretty much like that. So it creates a negative, essentially, of what your image is. And it's a very selective option. You're not going to use it on a daily basis, most likely. It's good to know that you have that available. One application where I can see it be very effective is if you're working with a graphic that is just black and white. And if you select the invert, it'll just switch those options from one to the other, from black to white, white to black and therefore it can save you a lot of time. So I'm gonna undo that and we'll take a look at the next adjustment which is posterize. And posterize basically takes the colors in your image and averages them down to basic levels. And you can see here the default bottom level is level four. The more I increase the slider, the more back to the original form that the picture becomes it's very similar to what happens whenever you save an image as a GIF using the selective option that we looked at in one of the previous videos, except that instead of saving it here, you're just reducing the color. And it's a very specific effect that here's level two, which is at the extreme left. So it's just another way of reducing color information to achieve a special effect. Again, it's not a tool that you're going to use on a regular basis, but it could have some very specific limited uses. Next we have threshold. Threshold I actually use a lot more and uh, the reason why is because it converts all the pixels in your image to either white or black. But what's cool about threshold is that you have control over which pixels get converted. So the more I move my slider to the left the brighter the image becomes. We're averaging again based on the histogram. The further I move it to the right, the darker it becomes. So I actually have some control over creating a very high contrast image just based purely on threshold. Now I'll show you where this can actually come into play in a very interesting way. Let's create a layer and I'm going to fill it to white. So I'm going to select white and I'm going to choose edit fill and we're going to fill with the foreground color and then the next thing I'm going to do is create let's just create a rectangle and I'm going to fill that rectangle to black okay I'm going to hit command or control D to deselect the marquee selection and I'm going to come to filter and choose Gaussian blur and so you notice that the more I increase the slider the more blurred our triangle becomes so let's go with a setting just randomly something like that now with this image here okay it's not a photograph it's just a graphic but if I come back up to image adjustments and choose threshold watch what happens it actually sharpens the image, okay? But it does it based on the pixel values again. So again, the more I move it to the right, the more pixels are actually being made dark, uh, which is why it's expanding. Because you remember, the original is out of focus. So by me moving the slider clear over here to the right, what it's saying is all the pixels from number 230 clear to zero are now black. That's basically what's happening. And if I move it the other way, you notice that it decreases in size because what it's saying now is every pixel is white. So it again, it's creating an absolute in your graphic. But what's fun about that using threshold is that in some cases we may have an object that's a little bit blurry that we want to sharpen. and as long as it's black and white, just black or white, one of those two colors, Threshold gives us the ability to, to do that very quickly, to sharpen it very quickly. But in the case of a photograph, Threshold also gives us the ability to 
convert it into black or white, which can really lead to some pretty cool effects, as you would imagine. The next uh, image adjustment is gradient map. And gradient map is kind of cool. Again, for special effects, what it does is it takes a gradient, like you see right here, black to white, which is the default. And it maps the tonal range of each pixel from 0 to 255 based on what the gradient is. So the default is black to white. So it looks like a normal black and white conversion. But what happens if you assign different colors to those same values? Well, I'll show you what happens. If we hit our drop down menu and choose one of the default gradient maps that's installed with Photoshop, like this one here in the middle, it completely changes the look and appearance of our photograph because now what's happening is it's telling the program, oh, by the way, pixel number 255, pure white, is now orange. And pixel number zero, pure black, is now purple. And all of these colors are assigned to each of those ranges of pixels. Remember, we've been talking about the histograms all along. Where that becomes really fun is we can go in and edit this. So we have full control. Like let's say we want to have um, some yellow in the highlight area. I can click just where I would want to add that yellow and then click again. You'll notice that the color is selected. Come up, uh, click on that color and get it to the yellow that I want. Click OK. And so now the pixels in that range are being affected. And if you have a color in here, say you added and you decide, you know what, I don't really like that a lot. If you left mouse click and drag down, it'll remove it. Okay, see how it's vanishing? And then the, the color is restored it again. And it, of course you can use any of the presets or you can create your own gradient as well. You can really do whatever you want with it. Okay, so you can get some really funky, cool effects just by swapping out the colors using the gradient editor in combination with the gradient map. Next, and the last one here is selective color. And again, the selective color is kind of interesting. I, I like this a lot because it allows you to go in and make adjustments to your image or your photograph based on specific colors only. So like if I choose, let's say blue, since we have blue in the sky here, if I move the adjustment sliders, the only color it's going to affect is the blue. And in this case, it's affecting it kind of subtly, except for the black would affect it slightly more dynamically. So it's a subtle adjustment in most cases, okay? Same with like if I chose the greens, which we have as the trees here. You notice that I can adjust the appearance ever so slightly. It's a subtle change. Okay, relative and absolute is just how it affects the pixels, either globally or in relation to each other. So this isn't a dominant adjustment that you can use, but it's again a way of creating subtle changes like you'll notice here in the rocks because there's red in the rocks if I move the slider to the right it softens the red and adds more blue same with the magenta I can subtract magenta from it or add a little more to it so it's yet another way of just tuning your image 